So what actually is deadlock? So deadlock is a situation in an operating system where two or more processes are unable to proceed because each is waiting for one of the others to release a resource. And that resource could be memory, it could be files, it could be printers. So let's say we have process one and it is waiting to get access to resource one. However, resource one has already been assigned to process two and process two is waiting to get access to resource two, which has already been assigned to process one. And so here we have a circular chain. And as you can see, process one will never be able to access resource one because that has already been assigned to process two. And process two is waiting for resource two, which has already been assigned to process one. And therefore we have deadlock. A deadlock can only occur if the following four conditions are met simultaneously. The first one is mutual exclusion. And so what does that mean? Only one process can use a resource at any one time. If a process has taken a resource, no other process can use it until it is released. So an analogy is think of a single lane bridge where only one car can pass at a time. If a car is on the bridge, no other car can enter until the first car has crossed and left the bridge. The second condition is hold and wait. And what this means is a process is holding at least one resource and is waiting to acquire more resources that are currently being held by other processes. An analogy is imagine a dinner table where Bob is holding a fork and he needs a knife to eat. And so he waits for a knife that Mary is using. At the same time, Mary is holding a knife and is waiting for a spoon Bob is using. And so both are holding one thing, but waiting for another. The third condition is no preemption. And what does this mean? This means that a resource cannot be forcibly taken from a process. A process must release its resources voluntarily. And an analogy is like being at a library with a rule that says you can't take a book from someone else until they're done with it. And so if everyone holds onto their books and waits for others to finish without reading theirs, no one will give up their book and everyone ends up waiting indefinitely. The fourth and final condition is circular wait. And this means that there is a set, a circle of processes, each waiting for a resource that the next process in the circle holds. And so we've already seen this in the first example where there's a circular nature of processes that are waiting for a resource being held by another process. Another key topic is deadlock prevention. And so prevention focuses on structurally eliminating the possibility of deadlock by negating at least one of the four necessary conditions. So mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. An example, is lock ordering and so this breaks the circular weight condition and so what is it this involves imposing a total ordering of all resource types and requiring that each process requests resources in an increasing order of enumeration and so how this is done for example is that if we have resources labeled or one or two or three or four and or n then our process must request these resources in order so it must request or one before it requests or two it must request or two before or three or three before or four and or four before or n. And this ordering prevents circular weights. And in the real world, this is widely used in database and file systems. There is also deadlock avoidance. And avoidance is all about dynamically examining the state of resource allocation and ensuring that the system can always reach a state where all processes can complete their tasks. One example is Banker's algorithm. And so this is a strategy used to avoid deadlock by simulating resource allocation for all possible sequences and determining if a safe sequence exists. And so this is done by before granting a resource, the system checks if doing so will leave the system in a safe state where all processes can still complete with the resources available. Banker's algorithm is more theoretical because its overhead can be quite high in systems with many processes and resources. And it's not commonly used in most operating systems due to its complexity, but might be seen in systems with highly critical and predictable processes. However, in reality, while theoretical models of deadlock prevention and avoidance are well-defined, the actual implementation tends to prefer practicality and efficiency. And so techniques like lock ordering, monitoring, and judicious uses of timeouts form the backbone of handling deadlocks in most real world applications. And to recap the definition, deadlock is a situation in an operating system where two or more processes are unable to proceed because each is waiting for one of the others to release a resource. The four necessary conditions for deadlock include mutual exclusion, so only one process can use a resource at any one time, hold and wait, a process is holding at least one resource and is waiting to acquire more resources that are currently being held by other processes. No preemption, so a resource cannot be forcibly taken from a process, a process must release its resources voluntarily. And finally, circular wait, there's a set, a circle of processes, each waiting for a resource that the next process in the circle holds. Then we have prevention, which focus on structurally eliminating the possibility of deadlock by negating at least one of the four necessary conditions and avoidance, which dynamically examines the state of resource allocation and ensures that the system can always reach a safe state where all processes can complete their tasks. In the real world, actual implementation tends to prefer practicality and efficiency.
I hope this was a clear explanation of what deadlock is, the conditions required for it, and how it can be prevented and avoided. If you want more in detail technical solutions, make sure to like and subscribe, and also don't forget to check out techprep.app if you want to see the most up-to-date technical interview questions and solutions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.